Should you wait on an all wheel drive plug-in Ford Maverick? We're gonna be talking about that today because two journals, one very recently and one a few months ago, we're talking about the plug-in all wheel drive Ford Maverick and really raises the question, should, should we wait for this model? Now already a lot of people have been waiting for the hugely popular Ford Maverick. Now we've got some people going back from 2021 who still haven't received their Ford Maverick and actually Marie, eh, my partner here on the channel, she's been waiting for her Maverick hybrid since July of 2021. Now Ford, of course, didn't want to offer a plug-in all-wheel drive Maverick or even just an all-wheel drive hybrid, a standard traditional hybrid right off the bat because they want to streamline the process and have fewer options to actually get these produced. Now this vehicle has been incredibly popular and its popularity is actually affecting a bit of its success because well some people are already tired of waiting if, if you already have been waiting this long should you wait for what motor trend is saying is going to be an all-wheel drive ford maverick hybrid system now they talked about this last summer june 23rd 2022 i was talking about it well about four or five months earlier and that shouldn't be all that surprising because while well, I've covered the Maverick for now about 200 videos worth and I get a bit of from time to time a little bit of insider information and of course I follow very closely what gets released as information from those quarterly, quarterly reports that Ford puts out. When Jim Farley talks he sometimes give, gives pretty big hints to what is to come when he's talking to the Ford investors. So should you wait on this and have you been waiting? And if so, please let us know how long have you been waiting and what has your experience been like? So please do drop a comment. I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews and I'm here to set the record straight because I think a lot of people are going to be waiting for this because an all-wheel drive hybrid Maverick already is what a lot of people want. And actually the plug-in is exactly what people need. This would be for a lot of people, 95% of the time, an all-electric vehicle. Because plug-in, remember folks, that means you've got a vehicle where you can press a button and force it to be an electric vehicle. And likely we'd be seeing about 61 kilometers or roughly... 35 miles of all electric driving capability out of the Maverick. But let's set the record straight. So we got Mortar Trend. This is a good read. And you also have top electric SUV. This goes back to only January 24th, 2023. So I was talking about this back in March or April of 2022. And I just want to put a few things, important things to set straight. These are great articles to read. I just want to do mention that Motor Trend is talking about, we go down here, they're talking, I believe, about an 11.1 kilowatt battery, 11.2 kilowatt battery. So we've got that right down here. It's not going to be that. It's almost certainly going to be a 14.4 kilowatt battery, the same as we have in the Escape plug-in. Do remember the Escape and the Maverick, as well as the Lincoln Corsair, all share, share the same platform. And the Lincoln Corsair already has a plug-in all-wheel drive setup. Now, Motor Trend goes on to talk about how there's quite possibly a 2.1 liter engine in this Maverick. So they're calling it, you know, that's the surprise that they're talking about. Uh, with a surprise, it's right in the title. This isn't going to be a 2.1 liter, folks. This isn't going to be a whole new powertrain that we don't know about its reliability, that we don't have really any indication if the powertrain is going to be solid and reliable. Ford's not going to do that to us, folks. So maybe this really is worth waiting for. But we'll talk about dates like very possible dates for this actually being revealed and available to the public in just a moment. Watch then to get that coverage. However, we need to talk about this model. Why would it be a 2.1 liter? Well, fair enough, Motor Trend saw right on the little box that's out here, 2.1 L. And also PHEV, so the PHEV is plug-in hybrid. So yes, they're completely right. I'd actually called this when that unit was still covered up, which actually goes back several months. Called it about four or five months earlier because even though this was covered up size-wise, I was figuring this is almost a done deal. Ford has talked about 
pretty much electrifying all the icons, the really popular models. So it was, it was written in the sky. Now this is further proof, but it's not going to be a 2.1 liter. This escaped using a 2.5 liter hybrid, which is very reliable and has already proven itself. The Lincoln Corsair is also using a 2.5 liter and that's with the all wheel drive and plug in option. So basically what we're going to get out of the Maverick is going to be a 2.5 liter, a very trusted, reliable and proven powertrain. And they're going to mat that or connect that, have that work with an electric motor that's going to be taking its power source from a 14.4 kilowatt battery, not an 11.2. So folks, don't worry. This isn't going to be a whole new battery and this isn't going to be really a whole new powertrain so we've got reliability in the work so in when it comes in regards to reliability this maverick is worth waiting for but you know what i think we actually have time to own a maverick get a great trade value or a sale value on our current maverick so i do recommend getting a maverick that's what we're going to do marie's going to pick up her front wheel drive hybrid and of course we'd prefer a plug-in all-wheel drive but we expect that plug-in all-wheel drive to be no earlier than 2025 because by then Ford will be producing its own batteries. They'll be producing batteries at a lower cost. And that's how they're gonna be able to bring it into this format, which obviously has a much lower price point than a Lincoln Corsair all wheel drive plug-in. So the battery I'd expect by then actually will not be lithium ion. It'll be something else such as maybe lithium uh, iron phosphate, We'll have to see, maybe it'll be a nickel based battery, but we need to see and wait. And we've got time. Just recently, we took a Maverick on trade at my local dealership. And the price it got on trade was basically pretty much window sticker. And also if you follow, you know, Maverick Truck Club, someone just posted recently that they tried out Carvana and they also got offered window sticker for their Maverick. So these things are holding their value. It's very impressive. So just recently, I lived through the experience. We got, we had window sticker on one of these things. So Marie and I, we're gonna be driving that Maverick. We're gonna enjoy it for the next, probably, I'm gonna say we're probably gonna get announced a plug-in Maverick in 2025. And it's gonna start showing up at dealerships late 2025, early 2026, and it could go as late as 2027. And that would make sense because it'd be time to redo the model, refresh the model when it comes to the Maverick. Now, I just wanna correct something. Top electric SUV, great article to read, but do be careful. They say that you can tow 4,400 pounds with the EcoBoost. That's not the case. They're also talking about, you know, what Motor Trend had photos of, the, it being a 2.1 liter gas powered engine under the hood. And that's, we've covered that, that's not the case. So you don't have to worry about, you know, some people will say, well, I don't wanna wait for that. I don't even want it to be on my radar because it's gonna be a new powertrain and new powertrain needs at least two years to prove itself before I'm willing to purchase that. That's just not gonna be the case, folks. Now, something they do cover is a lot of information extremely well. So the rest of their information is great. And they also talk about fuel economy of both the hybrid. So they're talking about the hybrid um, fuel economy, achieve, uh, achieving a fuel economy of 44.1 miles per gallon. Of course, remember these hybrids, the current hybrid system is a lot better in town, in the city than it is on the highway. And they also go through, so if you want to check this article out, they talk about, you know, what you can tow with it. And they're also talking about payload, so correct information there, but they say you can tow 4,400 pounds with the EcoBoost, and that's not the case. So I just want to warn you all, be really careful. Generally, for specifications, you should go to Ford directly get you know make sure there's a ford.com or a ford.ca so that you know what you can do with your vehicle and if it's a vehicle that i cover well generally when i cover a vehicle i go into extreme depth making you know anywhere from 10 to 200 videos on a model so i have time to make sure that i get all the details right now in regards to fuel economy very interesting they're talking about 23 miles per gallon in the city with the ecoboost 30 miles per gallon on the highway with a 26 mile per gallon combined. When you have front wheel drive, they also go on to say that for the all wheel drive, 
you're looking at city, 29 miles per gallon, 22 miles per gallon in the city, sorry, 29 miles per gallon on the highway and 25 miles per gallon combined in all wheel drive format. And I can say to the real world experience, that's pretty darn spot on. And I do like that, you know, they've gone on to talk about the 250 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque with that eight speed transmission. So they're giving the stats and I'll let you know that motor is actually a hoot to drive quite fun, but if you have 4K towing, it's for 4,000 pounds. Don't go ahead and pull 4,400 pounds. You're not gonna be covered by the warranty. They're giving out good specifications. So these are articles that I encourage you to go ahead. They're a good, interesting read, but always have backup sources before you go out and use your vehicle and then wonder why isn't Ford, you know, working? Why, why aren't they allowing my warranty to, you know, take effect and cover what broke even just recently someone someone pulled actually a trailer with a vehicle so a car trailer is about 2,000 pounds and well a vehicle is at least 3,000 pounds for example the maverick is roughly 3,500 pounds and when we go back to those photos here from Motor Trend coming from KGP Photography. Well, they had it right on the unit. They picked up this photo here. And in regards to weight, they're talking about 1,790 pounds. So that would mean that we're talking about about an, uh, roughly 200 extra pounds. And that would make sense because you're going from a 1.1 kilowatt battery to a 14.4 kilowatt battery. But they talked about 11.2 kilowatt battery. I just want to get the record straight. So a new article came out on this. Want to make sure that we're covered. And also they don't talk about time frame so much about this arriving. So a lot of you might think, hey, I'll just, you know, wait a few months and order one up. Almost certain it's not going to come in a few months. Almost certain it's going to come before a full electric Maverick. However, I'm not expecting this before 2025. The earliest I think we're gonna be seeing this on the actual roads is 2025 and the latest uh, roughly 2027. So that's the information I have for you today. Now you're gonna to wanna to continue um, following because we're gonna be doing a, a yard walk where we actually cover what vehicles are coming in at Ford. So we've got a Maverick, we've got a Ford Explorer ST, a Ford Bronco, and an F-150. So we're gonna be talking about what condition these vehicles are coming in from the factory. What are they missing? What are they not missing? So a nice little review so that you know what to expect if you have an incoming Ford vehicle. And hopefully, while well, a lot of problems will be resolved if, you're, if you order now and you're receiving it in three, two, heck, could be a year and a half, depending on the Ford model you're looking at. So follow along during our lives. You can ask questions about, you know, for example, hey, if I order a Mach E Select, what kind of time period should I expect in regards to wait time? So we're there to answer your questions where Marie will actually help pick up your questions. So Monday night, 7.30, we do a live every week unless someone's sick or something is going on that we can't make it, but we're generally here every Monday night to answer your questions. So we hope this information, I hope this information, and I say we, well, I've got my co-host Winston down there. We hope this information comes to you and is you know very helpful. We hope you're well and wish you all more cars and more power. Good luck getting your new model, whether it's a Ford or not. I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Please hit that subscribe button to help feed and dress those poodles. And until the next time, take care.